As the pass, Olivia and David are more strongly drawn to each other. Until finally, Olivia, fearing the possible consequences, persuades Henry to take her away for a while. Judy, in the meantime, has grown increasingly certain that David and Olivia are in love, that they were made for each other. Tonight, she's gone out somewhere by herself. Henry's out, too. And Olivia, in spite of herself, is finally drawn to the living room where David is playing the piano. Olivia. Yes? Why are you and Henry leaving? Frankly, because I'm bored here. Oh. Oh, David, must you play that? You liked it once. Well, I'm sick of it now, quite sick of it. Now you're just being cheap. I am rather cheap. Have you only just realized it? Wait. We mustn't quarrel like oh, this. Oh, yes, we must. And do you know why? Yes, because... Because we're so alike. We're both used to getting everything we want. Oh, we're spoiled, David. And spoiled people come to no good end. Ask Hannah. I'd rather ask you. You were happy before I came. You'll be happy when I've gone away. Do you believe that? I wasn't happy. I was content. I'll never be content again. How can you say that? Because I love you. And you love me, Olivia. Oh, there's Judy. Hello, Judy. Well, this heat is pretty terrific, isn't it? Awful. But you look cool. Do I? I've been up on the ridge. It was lovely there. What made you sweat all that way on a night like this? I felt like it. Where's everybody? Oh, Henry's adding up numbers. I don't know where Hannah is, and I'm going to bed. No, no, don't go yet. I feel like talking. All right. Uh, I've got good news for you, Judy. The foal's been born. Oh, really? Is it a nice one? Yes, a nice little filly, chestnut. That's good. I'd better see the vet before he goes. Oh, don't look so cross about it. David, come here. What's the matter? There's some fuzz on your coat. I, I do wish you'd learn to look after yourself, David. There. That's better. Now you can go. Thank you, Judy. David, it's simply monstrous about his clothes. Olivia, I wish you'd been with me on the ridge. I had the strangest sensation. I felt suddenly that I knew everything. That's always satisfying. Yes, it must be. Well, maybe I didn't know everything, but I knew for certain that everything I did know was right. Absolutely right. What did you know, Judy? Rather more than you tonight. That's quite possible. I don't think I know anything tonight. You're making a big mistake, you know. What do you mean? You know that expression, two people being made for each other? Yes. Of course, it's used pretty indiscriminately. But do you believe that sometimes, very seldom, but sometimes, two people are made for each other and for no one else? Well, do or don't you? I, I don't know. I should think it happens very seldom. Ah, but when it does, it's more important than people being hurt. It's more important than anything, isn't it? I suppose. But it depends. No, it doesn't. It doesn't depend on anything. Olivia, shall I tell you why I admire you? No, please. I admire you because you're honest with yourself and clear. I'd be an awful pity if you were ever to become blurred and messy. I've got to go now, Judy. No, there's something I want you to do, Olivia. I want you to go away with David... Henry will divorce you. Henry and I are getting out of here tonight. <laughs> and David and I will be happy ever after, I suppose. Of course you will in time, you will. No, that's not true. Olivia, you're going to do what I tell you. You're going to do what I would do. Judy, you don't know what you're saying. I do, unless you take David with you. There is nothing in the future for any of us. But you love David. And so do you. Oh, no, I don't. And David loves you. It's right, can't you see? It's complete. Tell me you'll make David happy. Tell me you love him for both of us, please. Oh, Judy, I... Where's Henry and David? The new house is on fire. We've got to find Henry and David. Come on. The new house. My new house. It's gone, Judy. I've lost it 
before it was ever mine. John Crawford, Margaret Sullivan, Melvin Douglas, and Robert Young, congratulations on an excellent performance. Ladies and gentlemen, go see The Shining Hour. You'll thoroughly enjoy it. You're about to hear if men played bridge as women do. But first, Ted Pearson with a swell letter we received from Mr. C.L. Frost, 3928 Monroe Avenue, San Diego, California, who on October the 10th wrote us, quote, I enjoy your fine program and delicious Maxwell House coffee so much that I'm constrained to write this letter. As a young man, I lived in Nashville, Tennessee, and was well acquainted with Joel Cheek, the originator and blender of Maxwell House coffee. Well, much water's passed under the bridge since then, and here I am, past 80, but still drinking Maxwell House coffee. Only it's the new blend now, which I think is even better than ever before. Unquote. Well, thank you, Mr. Frost. Letters like yours more than repay us for the time and trouble it took to perfect the new Maxwell House. And friends, when you try the new Maxwell House, you're going to find it smoother and richer by far, with a wealth of cheery stimulation in every cup. I think you'll agree, it's marvelous too. It took 12 expert coffee blenders eight months before they found a way to enrich Joel Cheek's original secret blend. Then too, by roasting each bean evenly all the way through, the radiant roast process brings out more of the true flavor. This way, there's no weak coffee due to under-roasting, no bitter coffee due to parching. And remember, the new Maxwell House comes in two grinds. The regular grind is correct for the percolator or boiled method, while the drip grind is correct for all ways of making drip coffee. Two different coffee-making principles, so naturally, two different grinds. Tomorrow, ask your grocer for a pound of the new and improved Maxwell House to try. You'll say that now more than ever, it's the coffee that's good. To the last drop.